Hello, this is Father Louis Skirty. Welcome to Friends of the Word, the weekday word. We're in the season of Advent, as you know, but today is also the celebration of the commemoration of the feast of St. Juan Diego, who was canonized by John Paul II. Uh, he was the person to whom Our Lady appeared under the title of Our Lady of Guadalupe. We'll talk more about that during the homily, and we reflect on the scriptures God speaking to us. Thank you for joining us, and let me hear from you, Father Lou Skirty at Hotmail.com, and pass this on to your family and friends. God bless you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Behold, the Lord comes to save his people. Blessed are those prepared to meet him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon yourselves and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When John Paul II beatified and canonized, uh, Diego, son Juan Diego, uh, I guess he knew, because it was, it's December uh, 9th, I guess he knew that it would always be celebrated during the season of Advent. I, I, don't, I don't guess, he did know, because obviously December 9th always falls during Advent. So we have a little, uh, little um, dual message today from, from uh, the work of Juan Diego and also the scriptures, but the scriptures are so appropriate for today. Um, Juan Diego was a, a um, cloth maker. And in 1531, on this day, December 9th, um, he was outside uh, Mexico City on a mountain area called Tepeyac. And he heard a voice of someone calling him. And he went over to the voice and a beautiful woman spoke to him. And she reveals herself as the mother of God, Blessed Mother, Virgin Mary. And, you know, he's, I, I don't know what your reaction would have been. His reaction was probably, uh, I must be having a dream or hallucination. And, but yet he had a communication with her, and she asked him to come back the next day. But before you come back, go to the local bishop in Mexico City and, and tell him, I want a beautiful church built on this spot. That's pretty much what Mary always says to people she appears to. Beautiful church on this spot. So, you know, he's a little, you know, he's a native. He's not, you know, the, the vision between the royalty, the poor, the hierarchy was vast. Okay? 16th century Mexico. So he goes to the bishop, tells him that I had a, meeting with someone who says she's the mother of God and she wants a beautiful church built on Tepeyac Hill. So the bishop, first, okay. Um, it's middle of winter. That area, the ground was frozen. Um, he says, go back and get a sign. You know, get a sign that, from her that I, would, I could put my faith in. So he goes back. Now on his way back, he got message that his uncle was dying. So he didn't go back to the hill. He went to home. And as he was going toward home, Mary appeared to him and said, wait a minute. Your, son's, your, your uncle is healed. Goes to the hill, meets Mary again, and he notices that the frozen ground is filled with roses, Castilian roses, not native to Mexico. And he decides to take off his robe and 
the robe is uh, made with uh, agave uh, cord and, and, and uh, fabric and fiber. And he fills the robe up with roses. He says, that will be a sign for the bishop, you know. Brings him, goes to the bishop, gets an audience with the bishop. And, you know, we say it like, it, you know, he knocked on the door. You realize how many people he had to go through to get to a bishop those days? I mean, I don't know. It might be that way today, too. I don't know. So, <laughs> so he has a, an audience with the bishop, and he says, I have something from the Virgin Mary. And he opens up his robe to throw out the roses, and the bishop sees not the roses, but a beautiful image of Mary emblazoned on the robe. And she's not, you know, blue-eyed, blonde Mary. She's Mary of the, of the Tepeyac area. She's a Mary of the local indigenous people. Dark-skinned, um, native characteristics for that particular indigenous area. And the bishop realizes, whoa, it's not a painting. No one really knows how it's on there. And it's, well, that was 1531, and it's still emblazoned in the, in the church that was finally built on that spot. It's in a frame over the main altar. And when, when John Paul II went there, he was like, thrilled with it. He had a special devotion to Mary. And of course, very subsequently after that, he named Juan Diego a, a saint. Now, the scriptures today basically say something like that about all of those who are called to God. How we are to, this is Isaiah. Now, Isaiah is speaking to the people of Israel. They're going through trauma. They're going through, um, you know, orientation away from their homes. And, and they're suffering. They want to go back to, to Jerusalem. And Isaiah is saying to them, lift up your eyes on high and you will see who has created all things. He leads them out, leads their army and in great numbers, calling each of them by name. By his great might and strength of his power, no one of them is missing. And he is declared, my way is hidden from the Lord. My right is disregarded by God. And he says, you have God, the eternal Lord, creator of all, with you. Don't grow faint. Don't grow weary. Hold on to your strength. Hope in the Lord. This is a little village man, Juan Diego. Yes, he was, he was a convert. He was a native of that area of Mexico and a convert, but simple. He, he was a fabric maker. He was a cloth maker. And he had devotion. We know that also, that he used to go to Mexico, to the main church there to receive the Eucharist and attend Mass on a regular basis. But he's a simple man. He's not a, he's not a prince. He's not anything outstanding. He's a normal person that God is telling him to open your eyes and look, look at creation all around you and see the blessings of God in creation. Now let's make that little leap. We're talking about Juan Diego, aren't we? We're talking about the people of Israel, aren't we? We're really talking about ourselves. God speaking to each of us through the scriptures. See, these words, although they're written a long time ago, they're current. They're God's word to us. And when Jesus speaks to us, he, he lets us know, even though he said it 2,000 years ago, Isaiah far longer than that, God is speaking to us. So maybe he's speaking to Juan Diego when he says, come to me, you who are laboring and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Well, we don't know what rest Diego needed, what Diego needed. He was a simple man who had a job. He was making ends meet. But so often we are in the situation where my burdens are bothering me, but my, whether it's illness, whether it's death, whether it's separation, whether it's unemployment, and, and the burdens put a block between us and God so often. The example of Juan, the example of of the scriptures in Isaiah, and the example of Jesus' own words. Come to me. My yoke is light. You know what a yoke is. A big piece of wood that was over the, the necks of two oxen that would walk side by side. And that the yoke was heavy to keep the oxen together as they plowed the land. So Jesus sees this 
probably points maybe to a yoke in, 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 the, uh, in the farmland that was there. My yoke, heavy as it is, is light. And, and you receive, you receive healing and you'll find my yoke easy, my burden light, and you'll find rest with me. Putting ourselves in the presence of God. Juan Diego put himself in the presence of Mary through her intervention and God's intervention. So we can, we can definitely say he put himself in the presence of God in faith. And the faith was rewarded. Mary is called Our Lady of Guadalupe. We celebrate it later this week. Our Lady of Guadalupe is patroness of the Americas. And there's so many weary, tired people in the Americas, throughout the world, but in the Americas, the suffering people in our own country and in South America and the other Americas as well. We put our faith in God. We, we rely on him. Our burdens are still going to be with us, but the attitude of faith with God, knowing that he's with us, knowing that Jesus is helping us carry them, will make them light. That's why we pray. That's why we, we come together. God doesn't need our prayers. He's got enough prayers. You and I need prayers. And you and I need to pray and put ourselves in the presence of God so that we can look around, raise our eyes to the glory in creation, to the burdens that we experience, and give thanks to God that we can endure them, go through them, fight through them, pray through them, work through them. Juan Diego is a nice example. Little guy who made it to the top by just being humble.